as we have explored the concept of SMOCs, Synchronous Massive Online Courses, developed at the University of Texas at Austin, we should also explore the question of whether this approach works. The stated challenge for SMOCs to address is improving large lecture classes in a manner that is personalized and that reduces the achievement gap for first-generation students. Given the three-year history, what do we know so far? Since Sam and I had been teaching this class for years, we were able to go in and look at selected questions that we had asked in previous years and compare them with this semester. And we found that they did were doing almost the equivalent of a letter grade better than in previous years. I have a lot of contact with a small subset of the students in this mock because they're also taking my other in-person class. So I have about 22 people or so who are taking both modalities from me simultaneously. And they've been incredibly helpful in terms of feedback, right, and telling me, like, what's the difference? What is it like to experience these two classes? And one of the things that they've said is, in some ways, we feel like we have more access to you in the online class than we do in the in-person class. In the live course, it seems like everyone's on that same pace, and so we we get the immediate interaction both uh, in, the, in the lecture mode, but also in, say, the chat rooms, and we can, uh, we can set much more timed experiences uh, like a lecture series. For a variety of reasons, it is my genuine opinion that, that the online course is superior, not just equal to, but superior to the big course to 300, 400 students in a sea of faces out there, and it's superior to that. What I was surprised to find is because we integrated assessments into attending class, just like in an in-person class, for some reason, our attendance in a thousand-person class is 95%. They all show up for whatever reason. I think it's partly the convenience. Where I had about, at best, 70% attendance in that 300 to 400 person class, and, and a lot of our classes get 50% attendance in those huge things, we have always tracked over 90% every time we taught it. If you ask students to compare this experience to other comparable traditional large class experience, a majority in the instructor surveys have found this to be a better experience. Beyond faculty and staff, what can we learn from the student perspective? Note that the answers reference both the synchronous class sessions and the asynchronous homework videos and readings. A lot like my homework as a lot of the pre-class modules and at first I thought, oh, it's a web-based class, it's going to be easy, but I'm actually spending like maybe three or four hours before each live lecture class watching just lectures and like maybe reading the required readings. I mean, I enjoy it because I only technically have to go to class um, once a week. so. For an example, I know I have like an art midterm on Monday. I don't have to worry about watching my pre-modules on Monday. I can do them Tuesday or Sunday. So it's kind of time flexible, which is really nice. Compared to like an in-class classroom style, um, I won't have like closed captioning on um, my lecture or on my professor's uh, lecture. So, and I can pause the lecture and if I don't understand something, I can rewind it back. I really enjoy it because there's, I can have the PowerPoint open and I can have the lecture with the closed captions and it helps me learn. The quizzes are actually pretty easy as long as you do the modules and the reading. Um, our professors kind of said like, as long as you do the stuff before class, you should be fine. So they're not hurting my GPA or anything. It's yeah. interesting <laughs> that you answer a quiz question in terms of how it affects your GPA. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't worry, it's not that negative as opposed to it helps me. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty interactive. Like, you would think it's not, but, like, the professors, like, they'll send you the emails. These two professors were the first ones that reached out to me at UT. So I got an email, you know, welcome to the University of Texas. This is some stuff you need to do before class. My other professors, you know, you just walked in and they did their introduction there. So even though it's online, it's um, pretty personal. Given the three-year history, can we learn anything from data and learning outcomes? The idea of using such data was mentioned several times in the interviews. And so what we discovered was, in our previous years, we had found that there was about a letter grade difference between upper middle and lower middle class students in performance. What we discovered with our class was we tracked them over the course of the semester because we had grades every day. At the beginning of the semester, they were the usual letter grade difference. But over the course of the semester, the lower middle class students caught up with the middle class students. And this achievement gap was about a 30-40% reduction in the achievement gap, and it maintained itself the next semester. 
the, the million dollar question, right? I mean, learning is what the class is all about. And so we certainly hope that they're learning. I think there's, there's good data, you know, that's already out there from some of the other SMOCs suggesting this. But of course, I have very limited information so far on my own. Lack of real proof of impact is a general problem in educational reform. And UT Austin is but one particular example of that. Everybody has anecdotal data, but hard outcomes are difficult to pin down. Unfortunately, despite multiple requests, we were unable to get any course or program data from the SMOCs to analyze. The only data we did receive was a 2013 paper describing previous pedagogical changes in a large lecture class using a system called Tower. In the paper, James Pennebaker, Sam Gosling, and Jason Farrell describe encouraging results in a class that replaced the traditional two or three exams with short quizzes each class session. One result of particular interest is the impact this change had on lower income students. But the changes we have seen in SMOCs go beyond the introduction of multiple smaller quizzes. Watching live stream lectures on a custom app within the LMS instead of sitting in a lecture hall. Adding video production segments to make the content more engaging. Using virtual discussions moderated in real time by TAs. These could all have an impact on learning outcomes, so new data is needed. It is true that many of the uses of SMOCs, including the recent move towards flipped classroom or on-demand approaches, are likely too new to have any reliable results yet. But the Intro to Psychology class has been in place since 2013, with more than a thousand students registered each term. That should allow enough data to at least publicly present initial results. The development of synchronous massive online courses at the University of Texas at Austin presents an interesting case study in the redesign of large lecture courses. This synchronous format, in contrast with many redesigns in other universities moving more towards asynchronous work, appears to fit more naturally within faculty members' existing teaching roles, and there are promises of improved learning outcomes to explore further. Given some more data to analyze and more objective demonstration of results, these SMOCs could add another option for other colleges or universities looking to improve results within introductory classes.